Hey guys, it's Mahir here and first we're going to be going over the intro to my track Grave that we're going to be splitting up into various parts starting from the intro to break down this track which I had lots of fun making uh, Firstly the track is just 145 BPM and I mean it's a normal trap, hybrid trap song that I went for and yeah, let's get into it So firstly is the intro which sounds like this So let's break down how I did it. Firstly is the melody which is just a loop I found. And what's going on is I've post processed it a lot so originally it sounds like this. So the idea is I've given this, I've given this vintage effect using gross speed over here on half time and some reverb and just some EQing along with that. Um, there's also a nice top vinyl on the master which is giving the old rusty effect so I've got 1970 here I've got the wave depth up I've got the mechanical noise up as well along that along with that I've given a sub bass so the sub bass also gives that same effect because of the vinyl effect and with that just a small down lifter which brings us the first part of the intro Continuing on, I have a small kick pattern that I wrote before and an 808 pattern which sounds like this. But then with the vinyl, it gives this old weird rusty effect per se. And there's no snare, that's why I'm going for a really weird type of beat here. And then I introduce in a melody with the hi-hats. And this takes us to our breakdown. So our breakdown is basically we're introducing a vocal, the gross beat is gone and the vinyl has also gone but still we're not introducing low end yet. So I have this vintage vocal that I'm using and I've processed it in various ways. There's an OTT, there's some delay on it, EQing of course, frequency shifter, oops, frequency shifter, more reverb and more EQ. Anyway, so the intro continues and I've also introduced some drums into it, some claps and yeah, just a bunch of claps and reverse kicks and kicks to basically build some hype and over here I have, I have a reverse 808 which has been resampled which gives that cool glitchy effect and just some scratching effects and some folly. So it's basically, I'm maximizing the use of my effects as you can see over here, virtual riot effects, I'm sorry. Next is our build and how I've gone about it. So I'll just play the build once and then I'll break it down. Alright, so let's break it down. First thing I've done which is very noticeable is the introduction, introduction of low end. So the low end basically in a way flips the page and it gives it a new chapter, new vibe, which is what I was going for with the build. So you can see it over here with the sub. Along with that, I have my synth and the sub is also going downwards and again like effects going on. And the vocals have sound, uh, are sounding more clear because I automated one of the effects over here with the frequency shifter. And the clap was continuing to build that hype. And the next noticeable thing is I'm introducing the main bass in. So this bass. Oops. And I'm introducing that with reverb. And I'm basically high cutting it. So. 
Yo no Boston, oh my god. Followed by that, I have the school sub hit. Along with the synth, so it all goes together. And I'm basically giving this kind of interval, so I have the hit, the vocals, the hit, the vocals, take like a call in response thing, and then we have some really fast pace kicks, like ta 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 ta. So all together, the build gets this. And of course, I have Endless Smile because who doesn't love Endless Smile? So, altogether put, the main tips for my build is I've now gone for a, like, a generic or a very common approach of kick, kick, kick and then you just speed it up. I've tried to play around with the vocals and I've also tried to introduce the synth which basically builds or makes the build what it is. Um, so first, we're going to go over the drums followed by the synths and then how I made them. Okay, let's go. Here we have the drums soloed out. So uh, how am I going about it? So I've kept it simple, that's the first thing I've done. Yet I've made it unique by not keeping it boring. So how did I exactly do that? The first is the kicks. So the kicks are fairly simple. It's just a normal pattern, nothing fancy. I haven't added any fast kicks anywhere, only at the end of here, if that counts. So it's basically a basic trap beat with the kicks. Then we'll talk about our snare slash our clap. So there's just layering going on here. We have this one, which is reverse. So it's nothing insane over here and I've taken this clap, I have made it unique, I have reversed it and I've cut it so it, we're basically getting the tail of it as a reverse effect which is super useful because it just makes your drums seem a lot more unique and it, it seems like you've actually spent time on your drums. So. And in a way it builds also towards the snare especially in a trap drum pattern. Lastly, we have a hi-hat where we just have on the second beat we have a open hat followed by just closed hats, highs. So nothing insane going on. Lastly, we have our sub bass. So our sub bass has also been processed here. It's very simple, just sound goodizer, and we're doing some EQing. I wanted to cut out the mids. I wanted to retain the uh, low end, and of course, I wanted the high end white noise super cool sub and it also just moves around so this is just from a sample pack and I played around with it and I stretched it a bit so I got this perfect sort of high pitch sub. So basically just a sub with good harmonics which isn't too hard to get or you have to do something very simple that can be done with stock plugins. So here I have wave shaper I can just press this and I can switch this off which takes it away from bipolar mode. And there you go, I just added harmonics. Simple as that. I've also added some more hi-hats, a layer in the second part of the drop just to give some more variation and I think that should cover it for the drums in the drop. Next we have bass arrangement and how I went about it and then following that we'll be talking about the sound design behind it. So the bass arrangement without the drums and effects it's just this. Okay, so how I went about it was we have four main layers in a way, right? First one being this. Followed by this.
followed by this. And lastly this. So each element is adding its own uniqueness. So this is your mids and your low mids. This is your very very low mids to your base. So just about touching the sub base area. This will cover your mids to your high mids and just covering your high end and it's acting as a, another layer. And it's all done with EQing so they don't clash and each fills its own place and makes it sound very very full as a drop. Along with this, uh, we also have reverb throws going on and we have automations which I'll be covering in a bit on changing the sound and giving variation. We have reverb throws which are very which are very simple to make. It's just a reverb with high decay, high size and low cut and which is automating the wet knob to give in a way like a throw effect with it. So that's there. And on the main sound over here, the sustain, we have kickstart which is basically just one for side chain a quarter note side chain so these uh, the pump 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 bass can actually stand out and come through in the mix so Another important thing is in the arrangement is in the second part we hear the flow change a bit. And that's literally because it is offbeat. I've taken everything and just moved it offbeat. I've taken this offbeat and it just gives a weird effect. So it's nothing great, it's just basically going offbeat. It's still one fourth, but it's just hitting at a different time, which gives it this nice, really, really groovy flow in the second part of the drop. Next, we have our sound design, right? So the first sound we'll be covering is your main sustain. So how does it work? So I'm using a rocket powered sound weird wave table here. Hey, what's up, man? Shane Gregoire here. And right now I'm going to be telling you about sexual energy. I, I don't know what to say on rocket powered sounds owner right now. But yeah, we're using that. So it's very simple where we basically have it getting cut out on the first note. So. And then it hits, right? And we don't want this sound over here. So, so go like this. Because it's basically just repeating after that because of the LF over here. So how it exactly works is we have we have we're using all of the oscillators actually. So I'll just break down each so just a really cool sound played at two octaves below and we're automating the wavetable position as well with the volume of course. Next we have a constant one which is giving that deep sound because we're playing with the sync. So if it was like this and then oh wait, oops. that's giving that nice sound that nice deep grungy sound. Then we have a noise which is giving that pss kind of hissing top end to it, the crispy high end. And lastly, we just have a sub to it, even though it's getting cut out, it just, it's, I don't know why I have it to be honest. Then we also have a bandpass filter, which is doing a lot of the work, because it's basically cutting out all the terrible high ends and all the really, really saw wave type notes. So making it a lot more bearable. Then comes the effects where we're using almost everything. Um, not all of them are exactly being useful, um, but the basic idea is we have distortion, so without. It just makes it a lot more thick. Then we have EQing. Not needed, but it was just for a cleaner sound. 
some delay, I have zero idea what that's doing. Of course, multiband compressor. I mean, hear that. That's horrible. Amazing. A uh, chorus which is being automated and some reverb which is being automated. And the most important is the ring mod filter. Without... So the ring mod is basically giving it its tonal sound which basically brings us to the end of sound 1. Followed by that we have this sound which is the exact same patch except the LFO is being laid out differently and the ring mod's cutoff is different so it's giving the same sound basically. And that covers it thing. And then we, we're just playing around with the deepness, the timber, we're playing around with various things in it so we're automating the sync, we're automating the ring mod position, we're, we're switching on the delay was switching on the reverb the chorus so that's all being automated to give it its various sounds so like stuff like that next next is our second sound which is this weird plug thing so it goes like and it's just a weird chirpy sound and it's an FM bass actually with the sine wave so that's that's very odd we're using a triangle wave over here so let me just break it down so we have this like really weird now the FM is what's probably the most impactful and the sub doesn't really count for anything we also have a filter which is basically a band 24 filter which is basically taking the important frequencies and playing with that and in the effects we don't have anything insane it's just a compressor to make it not sound like that and we're just playing with the mg low filter so we can actually have the high end controlled and in terms of automation um there basically means various things like distortion like the down sample distortion so the down sample is actually quite important in this later because i automated it so like that and we're automating the LFO and various things so it's basically a simple plug sound and again it has literally just an OTT and EQing going on for the mixing of it there's no post processing and in terms of post processing we don't have anything unique going on we literally just have a kick start like I mentioned before to make the second sound which we're going to cover stand out. Alright, so the next bass is really simple. It's just a reversed. It's just a reverse bass, and the pitch has been taken down 12 semitones. In terms of processing, again, it's the same processing as the block ones, and nothing unique there. Then. We have this bass which is also on the kickstart right and it right now it's basically consolidated to audio and simply the sound is literally two saw waves fm from fm and then you're adding a reverb filter and automating it a tiny bit um i'm not gonna make it right now because it'll take some time and i'd keep the recap kind of short but basically throws into audio and i'm playing with the lfo so i have a shortened version and then again here, when the LFO gets faster, I stretched it to double speed. And that should cover the drop. Um, so for finishing notes on the track, I have in terms of just, I have vocal samples placed through the track. So I have like my steam sound that I use in all my tracks. The ha recross sample. Yeah, and we just have some vocals here as well. So nothing insane going on, it's just some vocal to fill out empty space which I recommend because it just sounds appealing to the ear and it can it can help you whenever you're stuck and you don't know what exactly fill it with. Followed by that, I use that same kick in 808 to start along with some snares and I made this beat section here. And that's literally the breakdown and 
Drop 2 is the same as Drop 1 except I just played around with the sustain and actually wrote a melody with it which gives it the cool wah 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 effect. Yeah, and lastly coming to the outro I'm just using the same synth loop at the start and just fading it out with some reverb and delay. And I think that should cover how I made Grave. So if you have any questions, just leave it down below in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you.